As Kaya Kanepi took on Ludmilla Samsonova in the Washington Open's women's final in mid-August, US tennis fans were left miffed. When trying to tune in to watch the WTA Tour title match, won by Samsonova in three sets, on the Tennis Channel, fans were instead greeted by pickleball. Against a backdrop of amateur tennis and pickleball players rowing over court space, it's perhaps little surprise that this broadcasting decision was met with hostility and concern. Whether this is justified will be explored later. But first, for the uninitiated, what on earth is pickleball? Three dads invented it. Republican Congressman Joel Pritchard and his two friends Bill Bell and Barney McCallum on Bainbridge Island, Washington in 1965 to stifle an afternoon of potential boredom for their kids with only a mishmash of table tennis, badminton and wiffle ball equipment on offer. Pickleball incorporates elements of other racket sports but has now become hugely popular in its own right. By 1984, the United States Amateur Pickleball Association, now USA Pickleball, was established, and in 2022, pickleball was adopted as the official sport of Washington State. Played on a badminton-sized court with a slightly modified tennis net and a ping-pong-style paddle, players aim to be the first to score 11 points, serving underarm with the paddle to begin play. Unlike other racket sports, there is a 7-foot non-volley zone on either side of the net. Despite its curious origins, pickleball seems here to stay. It's growing at a rapid rate. During a five-year span from 2016 to 2021, pickleball participation in the USA nearly doubled from 2.5 million to 4.8 million. Bill Gates is among the sport's biggest advocates. The upshots of the sport are clear to see. It's a shorter game with a more straightforward scoring system than tennis. The courts take up less room. You can fit four pickleball courts in one tennis court. It can be played indoors or outdoors. It's a social activity. And while great exercise, it's not as physically demanding as tennis. Given the recent investment in the sport, often at the expense of traditional tennis courts, some view the growth of pickleball as a major threat to tennis. But are they right to do so? And is there anything tennis should seek to learn from its innovative racket sport brother? It's natural in many ways to fear change, but it's essential to keep a degree of perspective around the perceived threat. For context, while there's no doubt pickleball is growing rapidly, tennis's 22.62 million players still dwarf its 4.8 million participants in the US in 2021. Indeed, there are nearly 5 million more tennis players than in 2017, so tennis has outgrown pickleball in the same time span in raw numbers. Even if proportionately, pickleball's growth is significantly greater. If tennis players are genuinely dropping their rackets for paddles, then the sport is still finding new recruits. Similarly, there is a gulf between the two sports at the professional level. The US Open Pickleball Championships handed out $2,500 to the men's singles champion. Daniil Medvedev pocketed $2.5 million for defeating Novak Djokovic to win the US Open in the same year. It seems highly unlikely that pickleball will ever reach those eye-watering sums. Will aspiring junior tennis players really be turning to pickleball anytime soon? There is undoubtedly a lot of finance behind pickleball, but its broadcasting potential appears limited compared to tennis. Whilst tennis can offer different surfaces to broaden its appeal, with the grass, clay and hard courts all providing a variety of backdrops and promoting different styles, professional pickleball is typically played on a hard court. Furthermore, it's more challenging to scale up crowds around smaller sized courts. For example, those in the back row of the nearly 24,000-seater Arthur Ashe Stadium would probably not get a great view of a pickleball match. At a grassroots level, it's undoubtedly true that pickleball courts are being built over some tennis courts, but is this necessarily a bad thing? Supporters of pickleball will claim it can easily act as a gateway into tennis, whilst also attracting people to racket sports as a whole. And it can also be a useful exit point for elderly players who want a less impactful game on the joints. And given both sports are growing at a grassroots level, surely there's a decent argument that both can happily coexist, even if there are teething problems currently. Of course, tennis can't sit on its laurels. It must look at what is working for pickleball and take notes. One clear strength is reduced time, 
both on court and for broadcast. A more flexible and forward-thinking tennis governance structure would perhaps have already embraced shorter and different formats to run alongside the traditional game. Understanding its appeal to a younger audience and recognizing the challenges of the uber competitive entertainment market. But let's be clear for the time being, tennis remains in good health, health most sports could only dream of. Pickleball may well be depriving a few locals of the odd court or indeed inconvenience the odd fan trying to tune into the tennis channel, but the idea it's an existential threat to tennis as a whole seems, frankly, far fetched.